Section 2.2 limits. This section, we are going to determine if a limit of a function exists at x approaches a real number a. Limit defined informally. If the value of f of x get closer to some value l, as values of x that are smaller than some number a and values of x that are larger than a get closer and closer to a, but not equal to a, then L is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. Another way we can say that as x approaches a from the left, which is x less than a, and x approaches a from the right, both directions, y approaches the value L. So we can say that L is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. Limits defined symbolically. For a function f and a real number a, if the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left equals l, and limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right equals l, where l is a real number, then the notation is the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l without superscript plus or minus sign because both directions will provide the limit value the same, which is the L value. So this one is called a two-sided limit. As you see the notation, no plus or minus sign as a superscript of the value A. Existence of limit. The limit of a function f as x approaches A, or a is a real number, exists if and only if the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l, where l is the real number. If the left-sided limit not equal to the right-sided limit, then the two-sided limit doesn't exist, and we use the short term like d and e to represent that the limit does not exist. If the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals positive infinity or the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals negative infinity. In this case, the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a does not exist and we use the same short term d and e. In determinate forms and algebraic solutions, in any limit problem, if the numerator has a limit different from zero, and if the denominator is zero, then the limit of the quotient must fail to exist, or we say does not exist. However, if both the separate limits of the numerator and denominator are zero, then there may be a limit for the quotient. The family of factorizations revealed in chapter one will be used in solving limit problems of this special type. Let's see the example. We are going to determine the limit algebraically. In part A, limit of the function 3x squared minus 12 divided by x minus 2 as x approaches 2. In this case, the numerator, I'm going to write out, so the numerator in the term of 3x squared minus 12 for x equals 2, we replace it with the value 2, we get 3, 2 squared minus 12, which is 0. For the denominator, x minus 2, as x equals 2, we have 2 minus 2 equals 0. In this case, we have the determinate form. Or the case at zero over zero. So by the limit algebraically, we're gonna use actually to simplify the expression and then find the limit of the simplified form. The three x squared minus twelve, we can factor the three out be three times x squared minus four, all divided by x minus two, and then factor again of the term x squared minus 4 to be x minus 2 
times x plus 2 or divided by x minus 2. We call the difference of the two square. In the case that you have a square minus b square, this can be factored as a minus b times a plus b. And this we will have a common factor x minus 2, x minus 2 from the numerator and denominator. Now the expression of the function f of x is defined to be 3 times x plus 2, no denominator. And that pretty much the form of the polynomial function. So the limit of the polynomial function is the same as the function value. Therefore, we're going to replace the value x with the value 2 to compute the limits of this problem. Then we get 3 times the 2 plus 2, where x here is 2. Then we get 3 times 4, which is 12. So 12 is the answer for this problem. Let's take a look at another example. This is similar situation. When you replace the 3 for the numerator, we get 2 times 3 minus 6, which is 0 where the denominator is the same thing. 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3, also 0. Another indeterminate form. And we use the same strategy. We're going to simplify completely using factoring. Numerator, we can factor the 2 out to be 2 times x minus 3. The denominator, the expression of the three terms, we're going to factor binomial, uh, the polynomial, the x squared minus 2x minus 3, as x times x to get x squared, and the value negative 3 is from one positive side, one negative side. One quantity is 3, the other is 1, but the middle term is negative 2, so the larger quantity, 3, is going to have the same side as negative 2. Now we are done factoring. And we can see the common factor here can be reduced. The simplified term of the function now becomes 2 over x plus 1. At this point, if you replace 3 into the x, you will not get the indeterminate form or the zero denominator. That means we can go ahead and limit the value 3 to the x to get the result. get 2 divided by 3 plus 1, which is 2 over 4, or 1 half for the solution.